Oh yeah. What's up everybody? Welcome back to Inside Out Precision. Uh, today's video I'm going to be discussing arrow weight. So I've gone over FOC in the past, which is the front of center weight on an arrow. Um, the, per the percentage of weight that's you know in front of the center of the shaft. But there's a lot of questions that I get on, uh, on Instagram and YouTube regarding you know what overall weight should I be looking at. So I want to address that. Um, it's obviously going to depend on what you're doing, but um, we're going to start with hunting arrows. So there's kind of a trend right now in the hunting world with these ridiculously heavy arrows. And when I say ridiculously heavy, I'm talking you know 580 grains to almost like 700 grains. And yes, a heavy arrow will carry more momentum. That is that's a fact. Um, a heavy object, obviously, when it hits something, is harder to slow down. Um, but when you tank your arrow, or when you, when you increase your arrow weight past a certain point, um, what happens is your speed just absolutely tanks. And while speed does not necessarily mean it's going to be more accurate in terms of, you know, if I put it in like a hooter shooter and shot it, yes, a heavy arrow and a light arrow are, gonna, are going to shoot accurately. But speed is accuracy in the sense that if I have if my bow is only shooting 240 feet a second with a 665 grain arrow, I need a lot of clearance above above my shot, basically, or where you know when I'm at full draw, I need a lot of clearance in order to shoot 40 or 50 yards because that arrow is going to come out of that bow and it's going to arc big time. Um, and the problem with that is, especially in a hunting scenario, you know, if if I don't have time to range it, which a lot of times. You know, especially if you're still hunting, it's like you'll catch a little flicker of an ear or something and you look at them and they're, they're, they're looking at you and you need to make a split decision. You need to say, okay, it's, you know, 35 or 42 or whatever it is. And you need to draw back and you're going to shoot. And if you're a couple yards off with an arrow that's that heavy and lobs that much, you're going to drop a significant amount in just two or three yards. If you're five or six yards off, you're probably going to miss the animal altogether. Now, if you have an arrow that's a little flatter trajectory, and you may be familiar with this in 3D, you know, the, the more speed you can get, the better, because if you misjudge your yardage, you're not going to drop as much. You know, if I misjudge something for 25 and it's actually 30, you know, if I'm shooting at 285 feet a second, I'm only gonna drop, you know, a couple, maybe three or four inches. So on like an elk or a deer, you know, if you're aiming center mass, you're still gonna hit vitals. You're still gonna, you know, get a good shot on that. Whereas if I got an arrow that's like going like that, five or six yards, I'm gonna miss the animal completely. Um, the other thing it's gonna do is, you know, unless you're 25 yards and in, if that animal knows you're there when you shoot, when you shoot, if it's, if it's looking at you and knows something's up, chances are it's gonna jump that string. And if your arrow is traveling at only 240 feet a second or something like that, um, that animal's gonna get out of the way, period. Um, Cameron Haynes, who, you know, we set up a lot of his stuff, he built some arrows for a water buffalo hunt down in Australia. And they were like 780 something grains. Um, they were the FMJ Dangerous Games. And they shot really well, but, you know, A, water buffalo are not known to be extremely quick and agile, so they're not really jumping the string. And B, you're usually sneaking into within, you know, 30 yards of them. So, um, you know, you want a big, heavy arrow that's gonna penetrate really well. And it did very well on that. But then he went to hunt fallow deer, and he said he. He had two shots over 40 yards and those deer completely got out of the way of his arrow before it ever got there. He was shooting like 230 some feet a second um, with an arrow that heavy. So yes, a heavy arrow will give you more momentum. They'll penetrate really well, but you need to find that happy medium. So in my experience for pretty much everything in North America, an arrow between, and now this is, I wanna preface this by saying, this will have to do with your draw length and draw weight, but for most adult males, let's say, from draw length, you know, 27 to, you know, 31 inches, uh, an arrow in the like 430 to 500 range um, seems to do really, really well. Uh, I have a draw length that's 30 inches and pulling 70 pounds. My arrow comes in right at about 490. And, you know, I'm low 280s with that. I'm shooting out of a Matthews Traverse. Um, but the arrow hits really hard. It, you know, it's spined correctly. Um, and it's, it's a, I could get a little more speed out of it if I went with a little bit lighter arrow. Uh, but, you know, with the Axis 300s and 125 grain point and standard insert, which is what I needed to kind of get the, the tune on that arrow that I wanted, um, that's just where I ended up. It's 490 grains. 
Uh, in the past, most of my arrows have been between 460 and 470. Um, I can tell you most of the guys at the shop here, they're anywhere from like 455 to 480, somewhere in there, and they're all, you know, 27 and a half up to like, I think Trent's 29, 29 and a half inches. Um, so if you're pulling 70 pounds, you're in that 27 to 30 inch draw length range, an arrow that's, you know, um, 430 up to in that just below 500 is going to be a pretty good arrow for you. You're still going to get decent speed out of it. Um, you know, it's not going to be crazy fast, but it's fast enough that, you know, you're even at 27 inches, you'll be, you know, in like the high 260s, low 270s, which is, is not fast by any means, but it's, it's fast enough. You're not tanking your speed like you are, you know, shooting a 600 plus grain arrow. Um, so that seems to kind of be the sweet spot. Now, I know there's a lot of people out there that have killed animals with a much lighter setup. And lots of guys get hung up on the speed. They think that speed is what's gonna give them penetration. But the analogy, analogy that I always come back to is a ping pong ball and a golf ball. So if you stood five feet from me or 10 feet from me and I threw a ping pong ball at you as hard as I could, it's gonna leave my hand really, really fast and it's gonna hit you going really fast but it's not gonna leave a mark. It's not gonna do any damage to you whatsoever. It loses all of its energy once it, it hits something. So that would be like, you know, shooting like a 360 grain arrow at an animal. Um, now, if I did that, if you stood in the same spot and I took a golf ball and I only threw it half as hard, it's still gonna, even though it's not going as fast, it's gonna hit a lot harder and you're gonna know that it hits you because it carries that energy into what it hits. Um, so you can't have an arrow that's just, paper light. Um, you know, yeah, it's going to come out of the bow really fast, but it's actually going to lose more feet per second at 20 yards than a heavier arrow. So, you know, I've done a lot of testing um, with arrows at, you know, coming out of the bow and then a chronograph at the target. And like my 3D arrow, which I think they weigh 385 grains, they're losing about 14 to 16 feet a second at the target. My hunting arrow is losing eight feet a second at the target. So, and it's kind of funny when you test them, there is a place out at distance, usually past 60 yards somewhere, where your sight marking will be the same for like a 380 grain arrow and a, uh, you know, a heavier arrow, like let's say a 450 or 460 grain arrow. And the reason for that is because a heavier arrow carries its momentum better, as it gets out at distance, it doesn't start losing speed as fast. A really light arrow is gonna come out of the bow, but as soon as it starts to die, it has no weight there to carry its speed and its momentum, and it just starts dropping. So you'll actually lose more speed downrange with a really, really light arrow versus an arrow that's heavier. Um, so again, if you're looking for a great arrow that will do it all, try and get around that 450 grain mark. Um, I've blown through every animal I've shot with an arrow like that. I recently just had a guy on Instagram hit me up. He was going on his first ever elk hunt. He had, you know, the day six arrows that were like 600 grains, but he couldn't get any distance out of his sight. Um, he, you know, he had some gold tip 340s, but they were only coming in at about like, like 415 and they just seemed too light. He just, he didn't know what to do. So I told him, get some FMJ 340s, you know, put a good fixed blade broadhead on there. And he just sent me a picture yesterday where he, he shot a cow. It was quartered away. It went, you know, entered right behind her, her last rib, blew all the way through the vitals, punched through the rib on the other side and was just hanging out of the animal by its fletching. So that arrow, that arrow went through six or seven feet of an elk like butter. Um, so, you know, you're gonna need to play around a little bit, see what, you know, look at the grains per inch on an arrow and kind of do the math about, okay, once I get my, you know, my insert, my broadhead and my, my, uh, my veins and knock and everything on there, you know, what, what's that arrow gonna come out to? Um, and like I said, for most adult males, I'd say if you're 27 inches to 30 inches, try and get somewhere in that 430 to, you know, 500, maybe a little under 500. Um, obviously the longer your draw length, the heavier arrow you're going to be able to push with a little more speed. So you have a little advantage there. Um, if you are younger, if you're, you know, if you're a teenager or if you're a woman who, who's only got a you know, 24, 25, 26 inch draw length and you may be only pulling 50 pounds, then you need to kind of, you know, scale that down a little bit. Try and get an arrow that's maybe in that, you know, 385 to 420 range. Um, you gotta remember kinetic energy is on a bell curve. Uh, and so if I have too much speed and not enough weight, I'm gonna lose kinetic energy. If I have too much, too much speed or too much weight and not enough speed, I'm gonna lose some kinetic energy. Um, kinetic energy is a little overrated because it's lost once that arrow hits the target. It then translates into momentum. Um, but again, if you have a short draw length, 
and you're shooting a 500 grain arrow with 50 pounds, you're not even gonna be able to get 40, 50 yards out of your sight. Your sight's gonna be all the way bottomed out. That arrow's gonna lob eight or nine feet in the air to get to you know 40 yards. And so you run into lots of problems. You know, if you're shooting under the canopy of a tree, the chances of hitting a limb are a lot better. Um, if you got an arrow that's you know lobbing in there versus shooting flat, and uh, there's just you know there's a lot of theories on this. This just seems to be what works best. Um, you know, we see a lot of guys that come in here, and again, that 430 to 500 range, depending on your draw length and draw weight, should be really really good. So if you have any more questions on arrow weight, as usual, hit me up on Instagram. It's inside underscore out underscore precision. Comment in that section below. We love hearing feedback from you guys. Um, you know, we've, we've been putting out a lot of videos, had a lot of positive feedback, so we really, really thank you guys for that. And as always, keep them in the middle. And remember, precision is the decision. Happy hunting to you. I know it's opening up all across the West and, and some spots back East. So good luck to you all. Shoot me pictures if you kill anything and uh, just happy hunting. See you next time.